Sprouting green beans is pretty easy. It's not quite that easy, but stick around. Today we're going to go over our complete green bean planting guide. Come on, let's go. Hey, I'm Rick Bickling. Welcome to the How to Gardener, where we give you expert gardening advice to help you plant successfully, grow organically, and live your best gardening life. There's a couple different varieties of green beans. They can be grown as tall pole growing beans, low bush beans, or half runners, which is kind of a hybrid. They're a great warm season crop. They grow fast. They produce large yields, and they require very little attention. Beans grow best in full sun, in well-drained, fertile and friable, that means kind of crumbly soil. Before planting your green beans, make sure you remove all weeds and trash from the area. Green beans prefer soil with a pH between 5.8 and 7. Green beans should be planted after your last frost date and after the soil is warmed, but during excessively hot weather they may drop their blossoms and pods. For some areas you can plant a second fall crop about 10 to 12 weeks before your first frost for your area. When planting green beans, make sure you plant them about an inch or an inch and a half deep and spaced about four inches apart. Now, green bean seeds may crack or germinate poorly if exposed to overly moist conditions, so don't pre-soak them and don't water too heavily right after you plant them. A good tip is to make several plantings of green beans spaced about a week or two apart. That way you'll have a pretty continuous flow of green beans throughout the season. Crop rotation is always a good idea in gardening, whether it's at home or on the farm, to help prevent disease. Green beans are members of the leguminosae or bean and pea family, which includes green beans, peas, cow peas, and black-eyed peas. If you've just grown one of these in a certain spot in your garden, plant the green beans somewhere else this time. Some plants are natural friends and some plants are natural foes to green beans. Some great companion plants for green beans are corn, marigolds, nasturtiums, and rosemary. Summer savory helps repel bean beetles and also improves the growth and flavor of green beans. Broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage family, cucumbers, peas, potatoes, radishes, carrots, celery, chard, eggplant, they're all great companions. Now kind of a neat idea I'm trying this year is the three sisters plantings. It's my first time doing it so I won't really give you any, I don't have any results for you yet. Basically it's a Native American concept where beans, corn, and some kind of a squash or pumpkin are grown in the same area. The tall corn provides a support for the pole beans. The beans fix nitrogen into the soil for the corn, which are heavy nitrogen users. And then the squash or pumpkin provides shade for the soil to help keep it cool. Sounds kind of neat. It's been done for a long time, but it's my first time doing it. I'll give you another video later that talks about my results with it. Now some plants that are not good to plant next to your green beans are beets, anything in the onion family, such as garlic, onions, and shallots, they all slow the growth of bean plants. Now different varieties of green beans are better suited to different environments. And what I've done is I've compiled a comprehensive list of the recommended varieties of green beans, both pole and bush, for all 50 states. And I've put them down in the comments below. So feel free to take a look at them. Hey, and while you're down there, Go ahead and leave a comment, tell me what state you're planting in and what varieties you're planning on planting this year and maybe what varieties you've had good luck with in the past. Green beans are a medium user of nutrients and do not require large amounts of fertilizer. Now since they're legumes, they actually fix nitrogen into the soil through their roots. So be careful not to give them any kind of a fertilizer with too much nitrogen or maybe any nitrogen in it because excess nitrogen will delay flowering and also produce lots of foliage but not much in the way of beans. Now it is a good idea to apply a balanced organic fertilizer after a heavy bloom or pod set. Once planted, make sure you keep the soil evenly moist but again, don't overwater to begin with. Maintaining a consistent moisture level is especially important between bud formation and pod set. Too much or too little water will cause the blossoms and pods to drop. You want to provide your beans with about one inch of water every week. Again, in the heat of the summer, it may take a little bit more. If it's rain, don't worry about it. Have you ever seen one of those green beans where there's only one or two beans in it and the rest of the pot is all shriveled up? That's due to inconsistent watering. 
Make sure you water your plants early in the morning so they have a chance to dry throughout the day. As I always recommend, drip irrigation is always a good way to go. It's always a good idea to keep weeds out of the garden. But remember, green beans are pretty shallow rooted, so be very careful if you're using a hoe or even when you pull weeds. Sometimes the weed roots get wrapped around the green bean roots and it's easy to pull the whole green bean plant out. To avoid spreading disease, make sure you do not weed when the plants are wet. Applying about a 1 inch layer of mulch around the bean plants will help them maintain a consistent moisture level and prevent weeds. Now green beans, like most plants, do have some insects that are a problem. Cutworms are about a 3 quarter inch long caterpillar found just beneath the soil. They cut off plants right at the soil line and also chew quarter inch holes in the beans and pods and occasionally chew the leaves too. If you can remove them by hand that's great, otherwise an insecticidal soap or an organic BT based insecticide will probably do the trick. Now aphids are a small whitish yellowish insect found on the underside of leaves and clumps and if present you'll notice that the leaves below them are kind of sticky covered with what's called honeydew, but which is really aphid poop. Really the best way to remove them is just to get the hose and spray the underside of the leaves. Mites could also be a problem and they appear as tiny little dust specks that move around on the underside of leaves. Now if present, the leaves may appear yellow or bronze with some heavy webbing around the leaves. Again, just hose off the underside of the leaves to knock them off. Diseases may be a problem during cooler, moist weather. There are a variety of viruses that can attack green bean plants, and one of the main symptoms you'll notice is leaves that are mottled with a yellow and green patchwork, or the leaves may be distorted or stunted. Probably the best way to help out with this is with an organic neem oil. Now, green beans of the bush variety are ready to harvest in about 50 to 60 days, and pole beans in about 60 to 110 days. Now, you're going to want to pick them when the pods begin to fill with beans, but before the beans really bulge out. A good rule of thumb is to pick your green beans when they're about the diameter of a small pencil. Make sure you pick them carefully so you don't damage the plant. Probably a good thing to do is go ahead and grab a hold of the stem and then pull the bean off of there. If you just try to pull the bean, sometimes you'll end up with a whole piece of the plant in your hand attached to the bean. Green bean plants will continue to produce over several weeks. Whenever you plant anything in the garden, it's always a good idea to know what your potential yield is going to be. 10 green bean plants will usually produce about one to two pounds of green beans. After you've harvested your green beans, you're going to want to store them in your refrigerator in some kind of a plastic bag or a sealed container. They can usually be stored in the refrigerator for about a week. For longer term storage, you may want to consider drying them, freezing them or canning them. Hey, you know, tomatoes are another great crop that grows during the same season as green beans. Click on this link right up here and it'll take you right to our tomato planting guide too.